Although in this wet floor installation you see the walls are lined in plasterboard, which is common in the UK building industry, we would highly recommend the use of our 12mm waterproof wall panelling, due to its many advantages over plasterboard. It not only gives a waterproof substrate for tiling onto, but it also gives an increased insulation value in the room, a far stronger adhesive grip to tiles, and has anti-mould properties. So, you're ready to install your professional level access wet room. With your product, you will find an installation DVD and instructions. We recommend that you take some time to properly read the instructions before you start and check that you have all the parts shown in the instruction manual. You now need to measure the entire room. Mark all these dimensions down and note where your shower tray and drain location will be positioned. This will determine what size the 10mm waterproof boards need to be cut down to prior to installation on the wet room floor. The waterproof boards can be marked and cut very easily using a hard point saw or a Stanley knife. It's now time to lay the shower tray and surrounding boards in place to ensure they all fit correctly. Please make sure that you do not stand on the shower tray as this may cause damage. Now remove the boards and put to one side. Carefully mark around the shower tray. You now need to locate the joists nearest the shower tray and also mark their position. A handy tip for doing this is to look for the screws on the floor in order to locate their exact position. Once you have located this, remove all the screws in the marked area to enable you to cut and lift your floorboards or chipboard flooring. Set your circular saw to the depth of your floorboards and cut along the marked line being careful not to hit any surrounding wires or pipes. Remove the floorboards. Do not throw these away as you will need the offcuts later. Using an adjustable square, mark 18mm down on all joists. Then fix 2x2 two two battens to both sides of all exposed joists as shown. Cut to size and insert some 18mm marine plywood between your joists to create a solid floor at joist level. Securely screw the 18mm boards down apart from the board that is underneath the waist position as this will need to be removed at the next stage. Lay the level access tray in place and mark your drain location. Remove your shower tray and store in a safe place. You now need to mark around where your waste pipe and drain are going to be fitted. Having located the centre of the drain, a suitable hole needs to be cut in the floor section to allow for the drainage trap. In the case of the square drain shower base shown here, a square cut of approximately 180mm needs to be cut into the floor section. In the case of the linear drain shower base, a rectangular section needs to be cut in the floor of approximately 350mm by 100mm. Now remove the marine ply so you can install your drain. You are now ready to install your waste pipe and trap which is found in the installation kit. The waste trap and fittings are all solvent weld products. We recommend that you keep all pipes and drainage parts clean at all times and that they are cleaned properly with the appropriate solvent waste pipe cleaner prior to connection of all the fittings. After cleaning, apply the solvent weld adhesive as shown. The pipe moulded to the trap 
is a 2 inch standard solvent pipe and has a built in 3 degree fall. Firstly you need to fit the 2 inch solvent connector to the trap in order to then connect to the rest of your waste pipe. We also supply in the kit a 2 inch to 1.5 inch reducer should you need to connect to a 1.5 inch waste pipe. You must bear in mind however that reducing the waste pipe to 1.5 inches from 2 inches will reduce the maximum flow rate of the drain from approximately 60 litres to 45 litres per minute. Your drain is now ready for attaching to your waste pipe. Please ensure at this stage that the top of the waste is level and also is centred on the shower tray above. This is very important for the connection of the trap to the shower tray later on in the installation. Once the solvent adhesive is dry, it is vital that the drain is tested for leaks prior to installing the shower tray. You now need to secure the 18mm plywood flooring section around the drain as shown. The shower tray is now ready to be installed. Firstly, however, you need to reinstall any floorboard sections that have been removed up to the edge of the shower tray as seen here. Remove your shower tray and store in a safe place. In the installation kit you will find a bottle of wood floor primer, a paintbrush and some protective gloves. We strongly recommend wearing the gloves when mixing and applying all adhesives. Pour the wood floor primer over the entire floor and spread evenly with the paintbrush. Then leave this to dry for approximately 30 minutes. It's now time to install the shower tray. You will now need to mix together the Fix KST adhesive which is used for fixing the shower tray and 10mm waterproof boards to the floor. It is very important that you follow the instructions on the side of the bag. We would recommend that you mix using an electric whisk as this gives a better consistency for the adhesive. Now spread the fixed KST adhesive evenly over the area where the shower tray is to be installed. Then, using the silicone lubricant provided in the waste kit, generously spread it around the black rubber o-ring on the shower trap. Again this is very important for the connection of the trap. Before dropping the shower tray into position apply a wavy line of the Fix MD gun adhesive onto the edges of the shower tray that will touch the walls. Now bed the shower tray into position. Placing both hands through the hole in the shower tray, pull the trap up into position until it firmly clicks into place. Check that the edges of the shower tray are level and then leave to dry for 3 to 4 hours depending on room temperature. You are now ready to overboard the rest of the wet room floor with your 10mm insulated boarding which will bring it to the same level as the shower tray. First mix the remainder of your fixed KST adhesive and spread across the bathroom floor as you have done previously with your notched adhesive trowel. The 10mm insulated boards can then be laid over the adhesive. It is good practice when bedding the 10mm board around the shower tray to slope it very slightly towards the drain to avoid the chance of unwanted puddling in the wet room area.
When the adhesive is dried, it is important to mechanically fix the boards with the washer fixings over all the joints at approximately 300mm centres. Please ensure that you use the washer fixings with no larger than 25mm screws so that there is no chance of a screw penetrating the floorboards and potentially hitting wires or pipes beneath. Now place the waterproof internal corner provided into position and clearly mark around it. Remove the corner and using the protective gloves paint on the Pro Seal. Then press the corner firmly into position and paint over with Pro Seal. To seal the edges of the tray you will need to use the waterproof tape provided and ensure that all edges and joints are covered and sealed. The tape should be overlapped half onto the tray and half up the wall. Corners should also be overlapped with the tape by approximately 30 millimeters. All tape should then be painted back over with the Pro Seal adhesive. You must ensure that this process is repeated on all joints and corners throughout the wet room floor. The Pro Seal adhesive is a very important part of the installation as it not only waterproofs the joints but offers the same flexibility as the waterproof tape. This ensures that the seal between the shower tray and the walls will always be maintained even if you get any movement in the fabric of the building. It is also very important for the guarantee of the product. Place the disposable tiling aid into the drain. Using a suitable, flexible tiling adhesive, begin tiling. For tiling these shower bases, we recommend the use of an S1 cement based tile adhesive with flexible additives such as stone fix, which will give you a very high adhesion grip and a good degree of flexibility. The beauty about these tileable shower trays are that they can be tiled in many different types and sizes of tile. It is, however, very important that you note the following facts. We would recommend a tile that offers a good slip resistance, as a high polished tile combined with soapy water can sometimes be very slippy. Regarding the size of the tiles, any size tile can be used. However, if you use a tile bigger than 100mm in any direction, then the tiler must follow the falls in the shower tray with a cut line in order to maintain the pre-manufactured falls in the shower base. Here we are showing the tiling in a small mosaic, which as you can see, does not require cuts to accommodate these falls. Once grouting has been completed, remove the tiling aid and place the shower drain top into the shower tray before cutting down. Measure the distance from the finished tiles to the top of the shower drain as shown and note this measurement. You then need to cut this distance from the bottom of the centre drain section using the ribs in the plastic to help you achieve a square cut. This can be cut easily using a hacksaw as shown. This will ensure that it fits level with the finished tiles. To secure the shower top in place, use four blobs of Fix MD gun adhesive as shown. Then grout to the edge of the stainless steel rim. Drop the bowl into the drain and then push the internal dome into place so it fits tight as shown. A hair trap is also supplied and will drop into position. This is easily removable for future cleaning of the drain. Finally, place the stainless steel grid on top to finish off. There are options for the stainless steel grid. Either the standard grid, which is removable by hand, or a designer grid, which is made from solid stainless steel and has screws to secure it to the base. This is often used not only as an added design feature, but also in commercial applications. 